I don't do well in a quiet or timid environment, so I really feed off my energy, but then I think the people around me do as well. That was one thing I noticed this past college season, that my teammates really needed me to be raw, raw and aggressive, and it got everyone around me excited. So I've just really realized that I have to be myself in order to play my best, and when I am myself, the people around me love that, and they feed off it too, and want to be their authentic selves as well. My name is Asia O'Neill, I'm 24, and I'm a professional volleyball player. I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm an athlete, and I'm a woman of God. My dad is Jermaine O'Neal. He's a six-time NBA All-Star, and he's known for being a hooper. <laughs> I think it was just really cool seeing my dad excel at the highest levels. I got to see him go through his process. I got to see the highs, the lows, going through surgery, going to all his All-Star games, doing a six-time NBA All-Star, being like the man of the city in Indianapolis. So even though I wasn't super involved in sports at that point in my life, I saw what it looked like and what the blueprint was like. And I think once I started playing volleyball, it was nice to have that to go back and reflect on to see, okay, my dad did X, Y, and Z, and then was able to accomplish all this at the end. My first memory of playing volleyball was my first seventh grade middle school game, and I went up to block a serve, and I came down cheering, thinking that that was legal, and it is not legal at all. They got the point. <laughs> I didn't really know what to expect from club volleyball, but going to all the crazy tournaments with hundreds of courts and just seeing how big the sport was, I immediately knew that this is something that I definitely wanted to be involved with. I really like volleyball just because of the team aspect. I think in a lot of other sports, one person can kind of take over and it's just their show. And obviously there's a time and place for that, but I just love that there's so much camaraderie in volleyball. After every single point, you come together, win or lose. And I just think it's so fun. And it's a prime example of how team culture and chemistry is so vital for the success of a team. I chose Texas. Really watching their first national championship in 2012, I saw people like Kaylee Eckerman, Kat Bell, Bailey Webster, and I saw a strong, powerful black woman who looked like me playing a sport that didn't have very many of us looking like that. And then just the program in general, once I got to high school and I started going on visits, I had a lot of meetings with the coach Jarrett and I think he's just done a great job over the years of being a pioneer in having a diverse staff and team and just making sure he has a super inclusive environment and that was something that looking across the board I didn't see anywhere else and everyone is so bought in to you as a person and honestly just felt like home on my visit and I knew that that's where I wanted to be. I'm so thankful that 16 year old Asia made that choice because it definitely was a great one and I'm just so thankful that that is where I placed myself and that it all worked out in the way that it did. I was born with a leak in my mitral valve and a heart murmur. Blood would leak going backwards through the atrium instead of going through the ventricle, causing my heart to work overtime. So they had to go in, put a ring around that valve so that it would close all the way. And that's basically what they did in my first procedure. I remember calling my mom and just breaking down and telling her I didn't feel okay, like this wasn't just a, oh, I'm out of shape, like I am physically unable to do what all my teammates were doing. And I knew that I had a lot of expectations coming in as a number two recruit. I wanted to play, I wanted to do well, I wanted to prove myself to everybody. And it really was a tough conversation to have with my mom because she wasn't there. I didn't have anyone to really comfort me in the moment. And I just got into school, so I wasn't super close with anybody to have that emotional release with. So it was definitely a very tough conversation, but she was there for me and was able to, you know, help me get through it. So I went into a regular cardiology appointment that I always go to and the doctor just came into the room to talk about my results and all of a sudden just says that my leak had become severe again and it was time to quit volleyball and that was the only option. And Honestly, when he said that to me, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I knew I wasn't feeling great, but that was something that I just couldn't get behind. Um, he told me that I should try something like cricket and that really sent me over the edge. <laughs> so <laughs> I was upset, um, but luckily I had a trainer and parents and people around me who were adamant about getting another opinion. I feel great now. It's crazy to think about how poorly I felt before. My first workout back, I literally called my mom crying because I just was in disbelief that everyone else felt this way this whole entire time and I clearly did not, but we were all still competing and doing the same thing. My parents always told me I really need to advocate for myself, especially being black and being a woman. Those are two things that definitely can have some effect on your life and how you're treated. Um, but just even with that first doctor just telling me this is the only option, you don't have anything else, and not really wanting to discuss it with me or give me any alternative solution, um, I could have easily just said, okay, you're right, you know what's best. It's sad to think that that's a reality for so many women, especially black women. We're forced to just kind of take what answer is given to us. So it's really just kind of been 
an eye-opening experience for me because I realized my reality and my situation isn't something that all of us have. It's your life, it's you, your body, and you know yourself the best. So not being afraid to advocate for yourself and stand firmly on what you believe and what you think because no one knows you and your body like you do. Texas, the 2022 national champion! The 2022 season, we came in ranked number one and we stayed number one, I think the whole entire season besides one week and we dropped down to two. So we were expected to win the whole entire year and there was this crazy amount of expectation and pressure to do that. And I feel like even when we won, I was so happy, obviously and ecstatic, but it was more like a sense of relief that, okay, I finally did it. I came here to win a national championship. It took me five years and I finally was able to do it. But the 2023 season being seen as an underdog and no one expecting you to win and then coming out and proving everybody wrong was honestly a way better feeling to me. I know they happen back to back years and similar ways, but just being able to go out knowing that every single person in this room was rooting against us and all the people at home thought we were gonna go home early and we continue to prove people wrong. It just felt really validating that hard work really does pay off and you don't have to listen to all the outside noise. Like none of that matters at the end of the day and it's really about your core group and what you guys do together and you can accomplish anything that you want in the whole world, really. Whenever I serve, a lot of times I'll say, Asia, get it, ace, ace, ace. And I say that to myself, obviously it doesn't always happen, but in this one specific moment, clearly it did. And just the fact that my last point of collegiate volleyball was myself getting an ace, and that's how I ended my career, is so cool. Because I'm gonna be 90 years old, sitting on my couch and talking to my great grandkids and telling them about how that was how I ended my college volleyball career. It's so cool. So the Pro Volleyball Federation is the first professional volleyball league here in America. It is currently in its inaugural season, so we had our first matches in January. There's seven teams across the country, and we play a little round robin style, but this is the first year of the first league ever. In the moment, we're just kind of, you know, going to practice, going to our games, and just living in it. But when you really step back and reflect on how monumental that is, it's really crazy to be a part of it. I was picked number one in the first round of the draft this year. That was also very surreal, knowing I'm the first pick in the first year of the first ever league is also a crazy milestone to have in my life. I know people were saying like, why would you take a chance on something that's new? But I just had so much faith that the people want to see this and volleyball is exploding. As my shirt says, everyone watches women's sports. So people are really excited for it right now. And I was ready to gamble on it. And I definitely think it's paying off. I think it's so important that girls can stay here and play in America and still be able to play high level volleyball because a couple years ago, everyone had to go overseas. But we all work so hard throughout college to create these brands for ourselves and to create fan bases and connections. I think it's so cool that we'll be able to have that. So I'm hoping 30 years down the road, this is a major league and people are super invested in it and it just continues to grow. On the court, I want my legacy to be that I was a player that was really relentless and someone who worked really hard but also was just authentically themselves. And even if it's just one girl that I can inspire to be that raw, raw, stare you down and get excited with their teammates, at least that's one girl that I inspired to do that. So I just hope that when people look back at my career, they not only think of me as a talented player, but someone who, like, I was Asia 100% of the time and no one can take that away from me.